Coach, your players had the perfect response to when we asked them about being picked fourth for the AAC and yep. saying, I don't know if you coached them up, but what is your response to the preseason prediction? What did they say? That they were picked to finish two years ago, eighth, and they finished fourth. Last year they picked to finish fourth, or fourth, and they finished third. And so. Oh. No, I didn't coach them up. So good for them. <laughs> um, you know, obviously, uh, uh, we, we, we don't necessarily always want the target on our back. So, you know, it, it keeps us very hungry and humble, I think. Um, and obviously, uh, we lost two of our leading scorers, which was Z and Aaliyah. So um, it really puts a perspective to our returning players that they're going to have to really step up this year in, in scoring. And so... Um, I think it gets them really, really hungry. And obviously the competition in our league is um, really um, like a fight between, not fight, but like just everybody kind of gunning for each other. And you could tell at media day when we were there, everybody was like, okay, she's got her back, she's got them back, you know? So it was kind of neat to see. But when we came back, um, we sat down and talked to the team about where we were placed, like who made first team, who made second team. And nobody on our team made any team which I like that because it makes them very hungry, right? And so um, usually the years I've been coaching, those have been some of our best teams because nobody's targeting anybody. It means the whole team has got to really produce and we'll have strength in numbers. And this year, finally, we have 14 players that actually can play and we actually have post players that can play. Last year, we had two post players, which was really hard and we ended in third, which is pretty um, spectacular considering. This year we have five, so now we're going to have to, now we'll be able to play with like a normal rotation. So, tell us how Toe coming back, how that will help help the team out. Well, uh, Coach Dawkins and I talk a lot about her and Chad, like identical players. It's crazy how they're a lot alike. They have a tremendous amount of energy. They're just like that person on the team that everybody wants out there. They don't necessarily score a lot of the points or um, get all the rebounds, but it's that person on the floor that brings just tremendous energy. And, and they, you know, for KKB and our point guard and BJ being the point guard, it's hard to do all that they have to do plus bring the energy because usually a point guard, quarterback, people like that bring the energy. So when Tolu comes on the floor and now she's been in practice, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love you out here. And this is what we really missed last year in just terms of both her strength, her explosion, um, her offensive rebounding, her finishing at the rim. I mean, she just does so many intangibles, intangibles for us. Um, I know the other coaches in the league have kind of forgot about her, but last year when she wasn't on the floor, when we played last, there, last year, they were like, whew, because she was that player on the floor that fouled everybody out pretty much. And now with Tolu and Kiki coming back, that's yeah. also Nye more, because Nye had to take on kind of a different role last season. Tell yeah. us how Nye yeah, well, Nye's, right, Nye is um, our kid on our team that is like the coach's gem. She does everything. Um, she's not going to show up in your stats. She's not going to be the flashy player. But as a college coach, that's the kid on the floor that everybody wants on the floor. She does everything for us. She, if you now pay attention to her just a little bit, she, when she wasn't on the floor when we play games, we would really struggle in terms of the, the score of the game. When she immediately comes back out, she gets offensive rebounds. She's telling everybody where to go on offense. She's telling everybody where to go on defense. She's getting every loose ball. Like the things that don't come up in stats, that's what she does. I mean, they, she's talking. I mean, she's telling everybody where to go on offense. And even we're putting in some new stuff. She's already picked it up. So she's like that IQ on the floor. Zakia Saunders was with that in our guard spot last year. But so now Nye's taking up that role. Obviously, Fifi coming back is huge because that's our two post players, Tolu and Fifi, that are both seniors and they're pretty hungry. So it's going to be nice to, but nice still going to be playing lots of minutes because she she has to be on the floor. You guys kind of had on the defensive end, and now yep. that last year top point yep. nationally with only two post players. Yeah. Uh, you got some depth there. Just how much better can you guys take it defensively? With you're right. Team? You're right. So much better because now Kiki doesn't have to be in 36 minutes. That's hard. That's hard to do. You know. We would take her out of timeouts, give her like a minute, so she would get like two minutes break and then put her back in. Like, our team is so unselfish that they're like excited, Mossany. I don't think she got um, freshman of the year because she had to play so many minutes and people were double teaming her and 
as a freshman having to play those many minutes. Now she can go on the bench and rest. I mean, not have to worry so much about foul trouble and you can't touch anybody ever in your life because we have nobody else, right? So now even Mawsonie's going to be get some rest time. So if we could play KK, you know, 30 minutes at the most, I mean, her game is going to, you know, be tremendous. And same with Mawsonie. I mean, now that we have some post players, get her on the side. So our, like, I, I keep telling them this year, it's strength in numbers. Like, we got 14, and 14, you know, pretty good good players that can really handle it a lot. Obviously, our upperclassmen are going to be the ones that are going to be out there the most, but we can substitute in, especially in the press. I mean, that really helps. Coach, back to back point in the seasons, you feel as if it's, it's become easier here these past two years that now the culture has been set and, and ladies are behind you. Yeah, and I think that um, – the first person that start two people that started with was, was Zakia Saunders because she came with us from Albany, so that really helped us the culture in the locker room, especially. And then Aaliyah Gregory, and then KK being a freshman, our first year here, she bought in immediately, um, and we got 20 wins. And KK used to come to all their games before and watch them not be as successful. And so then KK being a freshman, having to play, being a part of that winning success, having two years of winning, 22, 21 games, you know, finishing the conference where we finished, going to postseason, not, KK doesn't want anything less. And so then you just get that uh, rise with um, your freshmen, your sophomores, your juniors, now freshmen coming in, they expect that, the expectation is already set. I mean, um, now this year it's really with KK and I and, um, Mawsony and Tolu. I mean, those are our captains, and like they're setting the standard already. Four straight on the road to start the season. Do you like that to build that team family aspect, or what do you think of that? Well, a couple things. Uh, we needed to really raise our RPI. Uh, so we had some games from the past that we didn't schedule that were return games that we had to drop. And so, in order to get games now, and out, and out in, the, um, in the country, especially the East Coast. A lot of these coaches know our system, know us from Albany. Um, it was really hard to get games with high RPIs. So in order to get games, you have to go someplace else first. And so that's why we have, do I wanna go four games on the road? No, but that's why we have four games on the road because they gotta return to us the year after. But you can't uh, get a game unless it's like Tennessee or Mississippi State to come here the first game. It's always you got to go away. So that kind of is like why we have four games on the road. But it's going to help us um, kind of grow, and, and we have some really good games on those first four games, especially Pitt, Eastern Michigan. It was in the Sweet 16, and we got to go to Easter, uh, Central Michigan, Central Michigan, sorry, go to Central Michigan, and that's going to be a tremendous game. I said for you guys to take the next step to go to that next level if it mm -hmm. starts in the non-conference, having a better showing. Yeah. You guys have already made your mark in the American on the rise. Yeah. Do you think the non-conference helps you rise to even more of a national stage if you're able to collect more I hope so. I mean, obviously, that's that was the point of everybody in our conference scheduling up and get, and scheduling better RPI games. And, you know, and, and um, Danny and Brandy and I really talked about it. Um, you know, and being okay with we're going to play some games and we may not win every single one of them, but at least our RPI is going to be better than playing teams that their RPIs aren't very good. And then when you get to the end and you're in third place, but your RPI is not good, it's not helping our conference. Um, and so that's why we really did it. I know that's why Houston's really doing it. Um, who's next? Temple. I mean, we're all, as coaches, really trying to schedule up just to help our conference out. Is that the goal to try to get at least three teams in the NCAA instead of just being UConn and I guess it's been USF uh, last few years? Well, traditionally it's been three, yeah. and so the goal is to get four. Um, and, and I think the first year they probably would have got three because Tulane's RPI was really good, but then we came in the picture and we beat some teams, and then, the, then our RPI was not very good our first year, my first year. And so we had beat Tulane, and then so Tulane's RPI really dropped and then pushed them out, and then we came and were, you know, we weren't supposed to be there anyway. Um, and then last year, I think if we would have had Tolu and Fifi, to be honest, I think we would have been in because we lost some games in the preseason that we shouldn't have lost. But that's when uh, Tolu was out and then Fifi just got hurt. And then we had to re-figure out our team a little bit. And we lost some games and that really hurt our RPI. So I think the goal every year is to get four and eventually hopefully get five. I mean, if we're scheduling up the way we're scheduling. You got a couple of transfers that are eligible this year after sitting yeah. out. What's the expectations of those two? 
to play lots of minutes. I mean, um, Anna Kelly is a point guard fast, like she's a ever ready battery. She never stops moving. She's 100 miles an hour. Everybody wants to know she shoots threes. So she's a three point shooter. Um, and so she, she just brings that energy back up. KK really likes playing with her because she plays really fast like KK does. And then Siani Martin, hopefully, um, you know, for her, she she does a lot. She does a lot of mm, she does a lot of uh, Zakia Saunders and Leah Gregory stuff. Like she got she's got a good pull up. She's a natural scorer for us. Um, and then um, Sydney too for us didn't play last year. She sat out and she's a three point shooter and she looks really good right now. So I mean, we have a lot of faces that people don't know that we have, which I really like too. So. You know, coming in, they're, they're not going to know their tendencies right away. Obviously, after preseason, they'll know. But um, we got a lot of different options, and that's why we're constantly talking about strength and numbers. All right. Thank you. Did they feed you? You got a couple chips and.